you, Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, for this eloquent, brilliant presentation of the genuine love of your heart for our beloved Guru Maharaj, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Your words were overflowing with realizations born out of deep affection and total surrender. I was thinking that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur were personally from within your heart speaking through you to glorify our Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much. Yesterday was the 50th anniversary of Srila Prabhupada's pastime of entering into the sannyasa order of life. In 1959, Vishwarup Mahotsav in the case of Gaudiya Math in Mathura, Srila Prabhupada took these vows. And oftentimes he would tell the story. How over many years while he was in the Grihasta ashram and later the Vanaprasta ashram, his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada, was appearing to him in dreams. And in those dreams, his Gurudev would be appealing to him to leave everything else behind and become a sannyasi. And Srila Prabhupada said, I was thinking, this is horrible. <laughs> to leave, leave my children, my family, everything else, become a mendicant. He had so many responsibilities. Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj explained the history of the relationship between Prabhupada and his Gurudev. 1922 on that rooftop, Ultudonga Junction Road, the very first Gaudiya Math preaching center of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he received that order You are an intelligent young man. You should take the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the whole world in the English language. In response, Prabhupada, in a very respectful but very serious way, challenged Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Who will listen to us? Prabhupada was in the attire or the clothing of one who follows Gandhi for independence of Britain. He said, until we get Swaraj, Swarat, the independence, who's going to listen to us? And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, politics are always changing who's in charge of a country is always changing. But Krishna consciousness that we are the eternal soul and our eternal love for Krishna is the eternal truth. But yet, 
when he heard this sadhu speaking the truth on that rooftop, Srila Prabhupada told us, I accepted him in my heart as my Guru Maharaj. He surrendered his life. And how he did it is very instructive for all devotees. Because there was no external formalities. As His Holiness has already explained, Srila Prabhupada didn't even take Harinam initiation till over ten years later. But in his heart, he had surrendered his body, mind, words, life, and soul to his Gurudev. And he was pondering on this instruction. Externally, he carried on with his duties to, to take care of his family. But in his heart, he was a surrendered disciple. He wasn't getting any honor or prestige, but he had that burning passion to serve. And he was just waiting for the time. He took first and second initiation at the same time in Allahabad. The Rupa Goswami Prayag Godiamat. Before that he went to Koshi and listened to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur for many hours speaking and everybody else was going out to different holy places, but he just sat at Guru Dave's feet and listened. And when it came time for his initiation, nobody really knew him that well, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, when he, he said, yes, I will accept him, he likes to hear, he does not go away. He met his Gurudev, Guru Maharaj, at Radha Kund, where his Guru Maharaj said, if you get money, print and distribute books. He started a temple here in Bombay, along with two of his god brothers. He was still a Grihasta. His Gurudev came here for the installation. His god brother said, Guru Maharaj, Abhai Babu should be the president of this temple. And Bhakti said, Saraswati Thakur, he responded, let him be as he is. He will do everything in time. He understood what was in the heart of Srila Prabhupada. We don't know of so many more meetings. Perhaps Prabhupada talked about a few other meetings, but there wasn't that many. In Gaudiya Math, Prabhupada was very highly respected because of his devotion, his, his scholarship, his beautiful murdanga playing in Kirtan. But he was never considered a leader. Srila Prabhupada, he took the order of his Gurudev so deeply into his heart. And then years later, of course, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his last instruction to Prabhupada, 
Prabhupada said, so many of your sannyasi and brahmachari disciples are doing so much service with you. They're always with you. I'm a grihasta with wife and all these children. How can I serve you? And very not much time before Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur left this world for Goloka, he wrote back the same instruction he gave him the first day they met. You are an intelligent young man. Spread this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the Western world in the English language. This was his last instruction to Prabhupada. Now what happened between that? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur sent the most scholarly, empowered, and best of his sannyasis to the West to spread Krishna consciousness. And some of his very powerful brahmacharis also. And they went, and they really tried, and they did, they couldn't do much. It was very difficult. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, the major amount of money of the whole Gaudiya Math was going to them. The majority of all money collected was being sent to England to help them to establish something. But still, they tried with their hearts and souls, but it just wasn't possible to do much. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was very saddened. And for years he was sending people. So here are the biggest, best sannyasis, scholars, preachers were sent and they couldn't establish much. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, after all that, writes a letter to Prabhupada to spread Krishna consciousness in the Western world in the English language. He knew that Prabhupada had the capacity and the potency because Prabhupada had such deep faith and such deep surrender in his guru and in the holy name. And perhaps no one else, even the closest associates, could recognize that. And then some years later, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is appearing repeatedly in dreams to Prabhupada. Take sannyas. He hadn't got all his children married yet. Prabhupada was very traditional, very responsible. We read from all those years of his Grihasta life, he was extremely responsible to his family and extremely, extremely committed to his guru's mission at the same time. Take sannyas at that time? Prabhupada said, horrible. But it kept coming. And in one beautiful lecture, it was taped. Prabhupada was crying. You could hear his voice choked up and weeping as he's speaking. He said, practically, my Guru Maharaj pulled me out of my household life. He pulled me into sannyas. And Prabhupada, when he would say pull, he was crying, appreciating the mercy of his Guru Maharaj. And when he was living at Radha Damodar, doing his writing of Srimad Bhagavatam, 1959, he was doing Back to Godhead, his god brother said, Bhakti Vedanta Babu, you must take sannyas to fulfill the order of our Guru Maharaj. And Prabhupada said, I heard my Guru Maharaj speaking through him. 
and he forced me to take sannyas. Fiftieth anniversary. And why did he do it? Only to be an instrument of the compassion of our parampara. And interestingly on this day, the temple room was filled with Hindi and Bengali speaking people. He was asked to speak by Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj. And Prabhupada spoke in English. And only maybe three or four people in the room could understand English. Nobody else did. And nobody was translating for him. Why did he? Prabhupada speaks fluent Hindi, fluent Bengali. He spoke English because it was symbolic. It was personification. He was taking sannyas only for this purpose, to carry out the order as Gurudev. And in August of 1965, he went to his Gurudev Samadhi and spent the day there praying and crying. Went to Adwaita Bhavan, praying for mercy. And then he boarded on Friday the 13th of August, 1965, he boarded the Jaladuta. And the amazing thing is none of his god brothers or any important people came to see him off. Because nobody really believed he could do it. It's just his son, his youngest son, None of his other family members even bothered to come. His youngest son, Vrindavan Chandra, and a few people who just worked for the shipping company. That's all. One was a Muslim. <laughs> five, five people, you know, went like this. They helped him, 70 years old, 40 rupees. How Srila Prabhupada had such deep substance of love, compassion, and faith in his Gurudev. Came off the Jaladuta in New York after having heart attacks and seasickness. Didn't know if it, when he first came off, there was nobody there to greet him. He just started walking. <laughs> but where is he going to go? What is he going to do? 70 year old Bengali man. And where the boats are, it's a very rough place. And Prabhupada said he looked right and he looked left. And he was thinking, he, was, he had complete faith, he said. Because he had the holy name, he had the order of his guru, and he had his boxes of books. So he had great faith that through the Bhagavatam, the mercy of guru, and the holy name, he would be successful. And we know how in the beginning stages so many apparent failures, so many obstacles, both in his health, he was getting heart problems, strokes. People were threatening to kill him. People robbed him. Nobody cared to help him for quite a while. It was cold. <laughs> but Prabhupada had that faith he kept his determination his compassion was relentless and he established our movement 
And what happened next was historically remarkable. How he inspired and empowered people. We talked about how very empowered sannyasis who were Vaishnavas from birth, who knew Sanskrit, Bengali, meticulous English, who were trained in the highest principles of preaching, etiquette, everything. They were going to these Western countries, and no matter how hard they tried, they just, it, it was just not very successful. Well, Prabhupada was taking people, that famous story Prabhupada said, sometimes a person picks up a stick, and then picks up a gourd, a pumpkin, and then picks up a wire, and puts them all together and makes an instrument. He said, that's kind of how I started this movement. I just you know, picked up you and you and you and just put you all together and told you to preach and chant the holy names. Prabhupada, what did he have to work with? They were not people from Brahmin families. He just took people who were meat eaters, who were having illicit sex, who were taking so many intoxications, who were gambling their lives away, who were confused. And Prabhupada transformed them into Vaishnavas. And within a couple years, by his example, by his compassion, and by his purity, of them, he gave them the power to go out to other countries in other parts of America where Krishna consciousness was absolutely unknown and start centers and all of them were flourishing. How is that possible? Shivananda went to Germany. Very rough place in those days. He started a center. Mukunda Maharaj and Janaki, just a man and a wife, sent them to San Francisco. They started a center. Another went to a new country, Montreal, Canada, started a temple. Malati, Shamsundar, Mukunda Maharaj, Janaki, Jamuna, Guru Das Prabhu, sent them to London, another center. And they were all really successful centers. Sent someone else to Paris and they started a temple. And these are some of the hardest places to preach in the planet. And the amazing thing, these devotees were not so advanced. They were not scholarly. They, at the beginning, they didn't even have books to read. They only had the first three volumes of the first canto. They had only the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, a little purple abridged edition of Bhagavad Gita. And they were only listening to Prabhupada's lectures not very long. They were only devotees for a year or two. Would know some skaras of the past. And yet they were able to successfully establish Krishna consciousness in a very profound and big way in all of these foreign lands. And the, and the amazing thing, all of these devotees who went all to these places, none of them ever had any money when they went. They all went with nothing. Gaudiamat, the biggest sannyasis were getting lots of money to start centers. Here are just some new devotees, some foreign hippies who just became devotees, who just start, were just struggling to follow the principles and, and chant their rounds, and they don't have any money. All they have is the inspiration, the example of Prabhupada, and their starting centers, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people coming everywhere, transforming their lives, becoming devotees. How is that possible? 
And some of those people didn't even last in their own Krishna consciousness. Of course, their service was an eternal glory. Some of them fell away. But, Prabhupada and Jaladuta prayed to be a puppet. And because he won so much affection, so much faith, and so much love from these people, they were willing to be his puppets. And even without qualifications at all, they were able to do what the greatest sannyasis could not, what the greatest scholars could not. Prabhupada was asked, what is our qualification to do all these things and to have all these things? Prabhupada said, very humbly, he said, you have no qualifications. I have made your qualifications. And he was giving the qualification his desire to preach Krishna consciousness was manifesting in a big way in all of these cities. He sent people to Africa. He sent people to the Middle East, to Iran, to Muslim countries, to Turkey. He sent people to South America. He sent people to Australia. Eventually, he sent someone to China. He personally went to Russia and sent a girl. He sent a girl there. Go there. Marry a person in Russia so you could stay there and preach. <laughs> and these were just, you know, people, the only qualification they had factually was Prabhupada's love for his spiritual master was empowering them to fulfill Prabhupada's mission. It's really a miracle how it happened. And Prabhupada was traveling all over the world and during Prabhupada's lifetime all of his temples were flourishing. They were overflowing with devotees and millions of books being printed and going out. And how was it done? Because these devotees that Prabhupada inspired were willing to risk their lives without expecting anything in return to go to some of the most dangerous and difficult places on the planet. To teach Lord Chaitanya's message. Srila Prabhupada's love for humanity and his love for Krishna had that power. And those devotees of Prabhupada who really took his instructions as their lives and souls and stuck to those teachings, like Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, such season, mature, re representing Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada was a, especially so proud and so grateful for every single effort that any devotee did to help him. And when a person who is so pure and so surrendered and so divine as Srila Prabhupada, who is so ultimately dear to Krishna, is grateful to someone, you know that Krishna's mercy is so specially showering on that person. Anyway, anyone, in any form, assisted Prabhupada. He was so, and he is, he is so deeply grateful. And that is one of the reasons why we hold such 
profound value in the society that Prabhupada established. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness is Prabhupada's personal contribution to our parampara. The institution that is, as Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj has said, the institution that is created by him to fulfill the prophecy of Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, the vision of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the mission of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, to spread this mercy of the rarest, highest nectar of love of God, like water, all over the world not considering who is fit or who is unfit. And understanding it from this perspective, that anyone who is willing to help in this movement that Prabhupada created is going to be so specially and dearly blessed by Lord Krishna. Why? Because Prabhupada is so grateful to anyone who helps. Srila <coughs> Prabhupada signed that, that prayer on the Jaladuta, your insignificant beggar, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. He was feeling that way. That was how he was presenting himself to Krishna. He came with nothing. And anyone at that time and anyone today who helps him. Beggars are really grateful. <coughs> beggars are grateful for anything. Prabhupada was begging us to assist him in his mission. On Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's disappearance day, on several occasions, Prabhupada was crying and begging us. He knew he didn't have long. He was begging us to carry this on. He started at 70. Even a couple years later in his lectures, he would say, I don't know how much longer I have to live. Prabhupada had so much faith. I think it was in about 69 when he got really sick and he went to India. He just had a temple in San Francisco and in New York and there were very new devotees. Everyone was just one or two or three years at the most. And he was very, very sick and he was going to Vrindavan and he said, when I go to Vrindavan, Krishna will decide whether I leave this world, because that's the best place to leave, or that's the best place for me to regain my health. So when he was leaving these new devotees, they really didn't know if they would ever see their Guru Maharaj again. But yet Prabhupada had great faith that they were going to spread this movement all over the world and carry on. And there were only a few people. Yes, Prabhupada would literally beg us, please carry on the mission of my Guru Dev, my Guru Maharaj, because I may leave any time. And in 1977, when he did leave us, it was absolutely devastating. But still, his disciples, because he begged us and he empowered us, they kept going. And being very young, taking on such serious responsibilities, many mistakes were made. And those mistakes had 
quite serious repercussions. But still, by Prabhupada's love and faith, and by his empowered dedication to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's order, the mission remained intact and came through those obstacles. And we see all over the world. Some places it's really growing. Some places the potential is fantastic, just waiting. But for all of you, first generation, second generation, third generation, and all other generations, anyone who simply remains faithful to this mission, whatever difficulties may be, and endeavors to assist Prabhupada in this mission, Srila Prabhupada's heart is flooding over with such gratitude. And we have faith that there's no greater way to receive Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, and Radha Gopinath's mercy than pleasing Prabhupada. And Bhakti, then Prabhupada just wanted us to chant the holy names, to show our love by how we cooperate together, by follow these regular principles, and do what we can to give the example to the world of true Vaishnavas. And by doing so, when we represent Prabhupada sincerely, his potency can manifest through even the least of us to, perform, to manifest the miracle of Prabhupada's love. So on this day, from my heart of hearts, I thank Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj for being with us and giving that brilliant presentation. And I thank all of you. You are all Prabhupada's beloved, beloved, beloved children. And please be grateful and show, you, show our gratitude by our willingness to follow and willingness to serve. Thank you very much.